All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Snowflake Summit 2025. Super excited to be here with one of my very good friends, Mo. Uh, you're not a new face to the Robert Show, and uh, great work that you all have done at Immuta. Again, uh, amazing announcements that you all have made. But just for our audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at Immuta. Yeah, my name is Moritz uh, Mo Plesnik. I run product engineering at Immuta. Fantastic. Uh, Mo, uh, one more quick uh, question. You all made a huge announcement uh, today. Uh, can you tell us a little more about it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's all about AI, right? We're right. here at the, at the Snowflake Summit, and we are starting to use AI more and more in our product to basically make the life of a data steward or a data governor easier. So we announced a set of different features, um, and you can see some of those um, behind us on the screen. Um, one particular feature that's called um, Review Assist, which makes it really easy to approve or review access requests to data, which ultimately help the data consumer get access to the data much, much faster, uh, which is a huge pain point today. So really excited about that, and then there are a couple more announcements coming. Exciting stuff for sure. Uh, more uh, quick question, because you talk to a lot of customers mm -hmm. and you get a lot of feedback, what's happening on ground, what are customers talking, uh, mm -hmm. but what are, what are you thinking in terms of the trends that you're seeing uh, with the larger enterprises? I know you all cater to a, you know large companies out there in various industries. What are they talking about? What's the hype? What's the ground reality? Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it's all about AI. <laughs> right? It's not surprising. I think it's it's really exciting. I think what's different than with other technology trends we saw in the past is just how quickly everybody's adopting it. So right. it's not that the large Fortune 500 companies are like slowly trying to adopt Gen AI and all the new capabilities. I mean, they are jumping right into it. I feel like it's really this race where every large company is trying to figure out well, how can we use large language models? How can we use the latest and greatest um, um, capabilities that are out there? Right. Um, and that's really different from what we have seen in the past. And so even when I look back like a year ago, when we were here at Snowflake, I mean, everybody talked about rack-based architecture and we now moved on and it's now all agents, right? right? So I feel like it's changing so quickly. But yeah, I mean, the big trends we're seeing, agents are becoming real. Yep. Um, and um, the, the the large organizations are really trying to wrap their head around, well, how can we use the technology? So true. But how can we do it like safely, securely? Because we are obviously governed, right? We are regulated. Yep. If you're a large bank or a large pharmaceutical company or healthcare company, you can't just use like the latest and greatest <laughs> technology, right? You yep. have to like put a little bit more thought into it. And so, yeah, we're really seeing this like battle between we want to move fast, we want to adopt the, the, the new technologies, but we also need to do it securely, safely. Yeah. Um, and that is where we can help. So yeah, exciting time. I think that resonates with me very well because I talk to a lot of enterprise leaders and in the world of AI, they always say that, what about governance, what about security? Yeah. How are we kind of uh, looking at that, Robert? Do you know that? Uh, and I'm like, uh, yeah, that's one big point that yeah. definitely all the enterprise leaders have in mind and uh, Amita is kind of helping them to get through. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of also wanting to know a little bit from your end, why does it take weeks or even months for data consumers, engineers, scientists to get access to the data? That's like yeah. the most uh, basic question, but then kind of curious to know. Yeah, you know. yeah, I mean, it's really frustrating if you talk to anybody working in a large organization, right? They, they come to an event like this one and they see everything that's possible and then they go back home and they are trying to work with data, they're trying to access data in Snowflake or in their warehouse or wherever. Um, and then what they usually need to do is they need to raise a ticket, right? Submit a ticket to maybe the data team, to the IT team, wait for a response, there's some back and forth, somebody else has to chime in, somebody has to approve, another person has to approve. And so, um, Although there is now all this great technology available and like everybody wants to do more with data, when you look into how is every large organization still managing access to data, it's with the same old ticketing solutions that have been around for the last like 20 years. Right. And those ticketing solutions, they aren't really optimized for access to data, right? They're maybe so optimized for, I need access to this application, right? I need access to Snowflake, and then you get access to Snowflake, but with data, it's a little bit more complex, right? It's not that you get access to all the data that's in Snowflake <laughs> so just true. because you can get into Snowflake, right? So um, how do you get access to the more sensitive data, right? There's a lot of process involved, there are data use agreements involved, there are data stewards involved. So there's a lot of back and forth and really complex approval chains, and the existing ticketing systems, they're really not built for that. And so mm -hmm. what happens is whenever we ask customers um, what we see is it takes them like maybe a couple of weeks, maybe months, and then sometimes I meet organizations, they're like, yeah, it takes half a year. 
to, the, to get access to highly sensitive data. Right. And that's obviously crazy, right? Because if it takes you half a year to get access to data, then you can't leverage the data, right? And then exactly. when you get access to the data, it's probably outdated or you already moved on, right? Yeah. So, yeah, what we really need to like be able to leverage like Gen AI and like all the great technologies that are out there today is you also need to figure out well, how do you get the data into the hands of right, the people that ultimately work with those tools. And in the right time, which is very much exactly. necessary, exactly. right? Exactly. Fantastic, exactly. these are great insights, Mo. Also, one more quick question that I have for you is around the data product in the data yeah. marketplace, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, how can they help enable quick and yet safe access to data? What's like the story there uh, when people are using Snowflake and you know now they're looking out for data? What's, yeah. How can they do that? Yeah, data products um, are interesting because yeah, we are, we are talking so much about AI and it's AI, AI and agents and everything. But then when you sit down with like data leaders in large organizations, um, data products come up a lot, yep. data marketplaces come up a lot, data quality comes up a lot because they are still all trying to figure out well, how do we help our company really do AI? And so where data products play a big role is, and also data meshes, um, if you're a large organization, you have lots of data, um, you're trying to make the data available for everybody in your organization. Right. Um, what you did for the last like five plus years is, well, you put everything into the data catalog, right? So you cataloged everything, and what people are realizing now, if you have like 100,000 objects, every table, every few, every model in your data catalog, well, that's not that useful, right? Because how do you find the most valuable data assets? And those are usually data products, right? So what we are seeing is that um, a lot of our customers are moving towards data products mm. to expose the most valuable data assets. And then the product manages data assets, right? To put them into a data marketplace. And then they're trying to really make the data products accessible quickly, right? So that you don't have the problem we discussed earlier, where it then takes two months to get access to a data product. So they're really trying to streamline that end to end, and I think it's like, it's helping at least our customers um, a lot from what we are seeing. Love it. I think we uh, in the world of AI, obviously, it is so good to see how data products also kind of play mm -hmm. a very important role, yeah. and the alignment that needs to be done with the, for the enterprise leaders yeah. is very much necessary. So that is fantastic. Um, uh, one, one more uh, kind of curious question, but also I kind of hear a lot about this is uh, about the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, what does the future look like when AI agents and non-human identities become the dominant mechanism of accessing and consuming data? And I was mm -hmm. talking to Matt as well a little mm -hmm. bit about it, but kind of curious to get your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. I, I think what Matt and I both see is like, it will be absolutely crazy. <laughs> when every employee starts to use agents to interact with data, because exactly. what we are having today is, right, take a large organization, Fortune 100 company, it might have, like, let's say 50,000 employees, right? But those 50,000 employees, they're not going into Snowflake directly, right? They might look at the PI dashboard, and there are like very few, maybe 100, maybe 1,000, like data professionals really working with data directly. And so what we are seeing is, now that you have Gen AI and ChatGPT and like those co-pilot type systems, right? You don't need to know how to write SQL anymore, right? You can just type a prompt, you get a SQL query. So suddenly we see many more employees interact with data directly. And that's already a big change. But what will happen on Very top cool. of that is, you will suddenly have maybe all your employees interacting with data, but then they will all start using agents within the next like two, three years. It will happen pretty quickly. And so when we talk to our customers, what we hear is, well, that's exciting, yeah. right? Because it will make the company more efficient, everybody can be like data native, everybody yep. can leverage data. Yeah. But it's extremely scary when you think about, well, suddenly you have maybe a million agents trying to access Snowflake, right? How do you manage that? We are completely unprepared. So um, what we see when we talk to large organizations is they're trying to solve today's problem where it takes like months to get access to data, but so then they're cool. also trying to wrap their head around, well, if it's months, even just for like a thousand employees that are trying to get access to data, well, how should that even work or scale if it's like a million right agents that need access to data in the future? Exactly. And that's a really hard problem to solve, and I don't think we have figured it out like as a whole industry, but it's definitely happening, and it will happen sooner than we can um, all, uh, I think, imagine. We all are exploring, and yeah. we're kind of getting there, uh, yeah. but things are kind of becoming real, and I really like to a point where There'll be millions of agents kind yeah. of doing it, but you need to figure out how it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, can't wait for, you know, obviously, uh, can't wait to see how Emuta is kind of doing it, yeah. but uh, y'all are doing fantastic things in the space. I've been kind of following the journey, obviously, uh, and learning more about, you know, the 
the agent tech uh, features that you yeah. all are bringing to the game as well. So excited about that. One last question for you, Mo. If people want to reach out to you, learn more about the different things and even learn more about uh, what's happening in the future, can yeah. get a sneak peek into the product as well, how can they do that? Yeah, I mean, you can always reach out to me, just like find me on LinkedIn, right? Send me a <laughs> message. I'm always happy to talk to anybody. Yeah. Um, especially if you care about the same problems we are solving because I think they're hard problems um, and we, we need to do a lot of work together to figure them out. So yeah, just reach out. This is great, uh, Mo. It's such a pleasure always chatting with you on the Ravid Show and thanks for sharing all the great insights. Uh, have a great conference ahead, yeah, but do. we'll keep the conversation going. Thank awesome. you. Thank Good you. Thank you again. Thank you everyone for joining us today.